Good morning, everyone. All right. Welcome to our assembly on the importance of Earth Day. Uh, many people think of Earth Day as a day that happens once a year where we show appreciation for our Earth by throwing away some trash, remembering to recycle a little bit more. Our class took a closer look at Earth Day and the movement behind it. What is Earth Day? Earth Day is an annual event that celebrates the start of the modern environmental movement. The goal of Earth Day was to raise public awareness about water and air pollution. The first Earth Day was recognized in the United States in April 22, 1970. Senator Gaylord Nelson, the founder of Earth Day, believed that our environment should be addressed in politics. Over 20 million people participated in a variety of ways on the first day Earth Day was celebrated. In 1990, Earth Day was recognized by over 200 million people in over 140 different countries. Modern Environmental Movement. The Modern Environmental Movement focuses on the concept of climate change. This concept stems from the ideas of pollution and the ways humans impact the environment and the Earth. Over the past three to four billion years, the Earth has uh, experienced a rise and fall in temperature, as well as several uh, ice ages and numerous mass extinctions, which are all occurrences, natural occurrences that take place over millions of years. The focus of climate change is not to say that it is something that we have not seen before in Earth's history, but rather how fast climate change is taking place and the human impact behind it. Climate change is a change in global or regional climate patterns. It is the increase in Earth's temperature. Climate is rapidly changing and is making distributive impacts on our environment. It's when the carbon dioxide level in our atmosphere is increased. This visual shows how much time we have left until global warming is irreversible. Uh, it was first discovered by Wallace Broecker, and most scientists say that it happens when the heat from the sun gets trapped in the Earth's atmosphere, and humans are mainly to blame for this problem. And it's called climate change or global warming because the climate is changing and becoming warmer. This picture shows the changes of global warming. In 1880, the global's balance of global warming had not sped up yet. Then in the late 20th century, global warming started going faster and the Earth started warming up. 135 years later, the entire Earth had increased in temperature and it was affecting animals and surviving cold weather. Also, the glaciers started melting rapidly and making the water level rise. And if this keeps up, then cities on the harbor and cities at low points will flood and, and will force the entire population to move to higher places on Earth. This image basically illustrates the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect increases the temperature of the Earth by trapping heat in our atmosphere. Because of this, the temperature of the Earth is higher than what, than what it would be. When sunlight reaches the surface of the Earth, some of it, absor some of it is absorbed and some of it uh, radiate back into space. This is pretty much where the greenhouse effect plays in. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorb and redirect some of this heat back towards the Earth, making the Earth warmer than what it would be. Greenhouse gases are gases that absorb heat from the Earth and then send it back, back to Earth to make it warmer. These gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Climate change has already had observable effects on the environment. Throughout the continuous process, there have been many differences among the atmosphere. One large difference among the Earth due to the theory of global warming is that there is noticeably less snow and ice. Due to the melting of the cryosphere or the frozen water on Earth, the planet's snow, glaciers, and freshwater ice are melting rapidly. Melting ice from the sea exposes darker ocean waters, which absorb more sunlight than it absorbs ice. This causes the temperature in the oceans to be higher. The glaciers are melting because there's more carbon in the air, which is caused by the increase in the population. The Arctic Ocean is expected to become essentially ice-free in the summer before mid-century. Another effect of climate change is a change in snow and precipitation patterns. As temperature rises and the air becomes warmer, moisture evaporates from land and water into the atmosphere. 
When we have moisture in the air, it usually means we can expect more rain and snow, as well as heavier downpours. On average, the world's precipitation is increasing a larger amount than 100 years ago. When having too little or too much rain, it could be a very large problem. This is because in many places, people depend on precipitation to provide a source of water for many uses. However, heavy rain can cause floods. Permafrost, which is a frozen layer of soil that remains frozen throughout the year, is another issue due to climate change. As this layer of frozen soil of frozen soil thaws, the carbon in it is released to the atmosphere in a form of methane, which is a dangerous greenhouse gas. Thawing permafrost causes erosion, disappearance of lakes, and landslides. Increasing the amount of these dangerous gases escaping into the atmosphere due to the thawing of permafrost could make the Earth's climate warm up even more. Finally, an additional effect of climate change is stronger storms. Due to the fact that global warming increases the heat of the Earth, it strengthens the occurrence of storms. Extra heat in the atmosphere or ocean nourishes storms. The more energy that goes in the, the quicker a weather system can occur. There is also evidence that extra water vapor is making storms wetter. This is due to the increase in precipitation. Also, rising sea levels increases the beginning of storms. Effects of rising sea levels. Homes and cities by the oceans could get submerged completely or very damaged. Erosion increases the amount of dirt and sand in the sea, which could harm the fish and ocean wildlife. Effects of wildfires. Uh, economic costs on planes, trucks, chemicals, houses, etc. Soil will not have any organic value because the temperature of the fire will be too hot and everything will die and lose its health. Uh, effects on droughts. Uh, losses or destruction of fish and wildlife habitats. Poor soil quality. Loss of wetlands migration of wildlife, lack of food and water for animals, and increased stress on endangered species. Warmer oceans. With warm air comes warm water. When the water gets warmer, it affects weather patterns. Warmer oceans cause powerful tropical storms and can impact sea life. With warmer oceans also comes rising sea level. The rising sea level can affect any living, living thing. Uh, damaged corals. The warm air makes the surface of water warmer. The warm water stresses the cori because they are sensitive to changes in temperature. If water temperature is higher than normal, the coral reef will turn white and that can cause diseases. It can also increase the use of greenhouse gases. Heat waves can be caused by climate change. Heat waves are when there is severe hot weather over a period, period of time. Droughts in the southwest and heat waves everywhere are predicted to become more intense. Summer temperatures are also projected to continue rising. By the end of this century, we'll have been once in 20, year, 20 years extreme heat days are projected to occur every two or three years over most of the nation. One of the effects that climate change has on land animals and birds is that it affects how they migrate. Since the temperature in the world is increasing, birds are migrating in shorter distances. Distribution of animals is also affected, with many species moving closer to the poles as a response to the rising global temperatures. Many of the fish and animals that rely on the river to migrate will be threatened by rising sea levels. Plant life cycles are affected by climate change as well. If the earth keeps on getting warmer, up to one-fourth of all the plants and animals on earth could become extinct within a century. Plants require specific environmental conditions, like the right temperature, in order to live. Small changes in the environment can affect the reproduction and survival of a plant species. As global temperatures rise, both animal and plant populations are projected to gradually shift towards the north and upward to higher elevations where temperatures are cooler in order to stay within the range of their ideal living conditions. The climate animals live in influence their life cycle, but due to climate change, the timing of key events in the animal's life cycle are changed. When an organism migrates at a location before or after their usual destination, it can affect many other organi organisms' migration patterns, breeding, pest avoidance, and food availability. It is proven that growth and survival are reduced when migrants are arrive to a location before or after food sources are present. This is a problem because in a California study, 16 out of 23 butterfly species shifted their migration timing and arrived earlier.
The amount of natural disasters have increased a lot throughout the years. As you can see, there has been a massive skyrocket in the amount of natural disasters from 1980 to 2010. Droughts, forest fires, floods have all increased in the result of climate change. Moisture in the soil and air has gone down, which increased the chances of droughts and forest fires. And the same for flash floods. Water level is increasing from the result of ice melting up north and from glaciers. The CO2 concentration is the amount of CO2 molecules in any given section of the atmosphere. This is usually measured in parts per million. The CO2 concentration increases and decreases in cycles. But within the past 100 years, CO2 levels have spiked. The continued burning of fossil fuels have caused CO2 levels to increase dramatically. The CO2 concentration has increased by 30% since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. For hundreds of thousands of years, CO2 levels have not reached 300 parts per million. In 1950, CO2 levels reached 320 parts per million. In 2007, CO2 levels reached 380 parts per million. Today, the CO2 levels exceed 400 parts per million and are nearing 500. Soon, we will reach levels not seen in 50 million years. CO2 concentrations and temperature have pursued each other closely for the last 300,000 years. But in recent years, we have seen a spike in CO2 parts per million. Only 10 years ago, in 2007, CO2 parts per million reached 383. The temperature was very far behind. It stayed at 260 degrees. Because the CO2 concentrations are still rising at a fast pace, and the temperature stayed very, very far behind, it's very easy to tell that the temperature will soon rise and reach that of the CO2 concentrations. There are many ways we can see climate change, as it happens all around us. Glaciers play a large role in how it affects the environment. All glaciers go through a cycle of advancing and retreating due to climate change. This is a picture of a glacier as years pass. In this picture, it shows a glacier's retreat from 1902 to 2010. The first gap represents 100 years, and the second gap represents 10 years. Glacier's cycle of advancing and retreating used to be balanced with not many drastic changes. But recently, many glaciers have retreated more than they have advanced. For example, this glacier has retreated more in 10 years than it did in 100 years. This has been happening to glaciers all over the world. 1,400 glaciers existed in Yukon in 1958, but by 2007-2008, only one glacier had advanced, while 523 disappeared and 876 retreated. Now 22% of the area covered in ice 50 years ago is now currently ice-free. When glaciers melt, the water levels rise, causing more floods and habitat loss. Almost all the heat on Earth comes from the sun. Sunlight is either absorbed or reflected by the Earth. Some surfaces can absorb while others can reflect. For example, ice reflects while the ocean absorbs. As the accumulation of greenhouse gases increases, ice sheets near the caps start to melt, since greenhouse gases reflect light back to the surface of the Earth. This melting causes more ocean to absorb the light and less ice to reflect it. This snowball effect could cause there to be little to no ice in a matter of decades. The mining industry is one of the biggest contributors to climate change. When we mine and burn fossil fuels, we are only furthering climate change. Climate change also disrupts mines and the infrastructure of mines, which leads us to having to spend billions of dollars. We can either stop one of our biggest industries or continue and spend billions of dollars while still damaging the earth. A method of mining called strip mining attacks dark colored vegetation, which releases gases that contribute to global warming. Along with machinery, mining has a sizable contribution to climate change. Deforestation is when people clear a large area of forest. This happens to support the population surge. One specific technique called the slash and burn method releases all the CO2 from trees by cutting them down by cutting them down and burning them. The surplus of CO2 can create natural disasters such as storms and wildfires. The plankton boom due to warming seas. This is a cause, this is an effect of climate change that further causes climate change. Phytoplankton need nutrients and sunlight to survive. Because they absorb sunlight and because their population has grown significantly, they're raising the temperature in the water. This therefore disrupts the ecosystem and causes orcas to eat sea otters and sea urchins to explode which is contributing to climate change considerably. It's an effect of climate change that further contributes to climate change. Ozone depletion happens when chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, get 
uh, released into the atmosphere uh, from aerosol cans or refrigerants. These, these CFCs break down ozone molecules and expose UV rays. When people are exposed to UV rays, it can cause skin cancer, sunburns, and premature aging of the skin. According to the World Watch Institute, the biggest challenges facing the world today are climate change and population growth. Population growth has been shown to be closely linked to climate change. About 140 people are born every minute, which amounts to about 200,000 people being born every day. More people being added to the population means more fossil fuels being burned to sustain those people and provide them with what they need, which in turn means more greenhouse gases being released into the atmosphere. In addition, up to about 10 billion people can be sustained on our planet food-wise, assuming we cannot get everyone to convert to vegetarianism. However, to contradict an earlier point, a lower population in one area does not necessarily mean less greenhouse gases being released from that area. The United States, for example, contributes to just 5% of the world's population, yet generates about 25% of the world's total CO2 output. This is the carbon footprint. The carbon footprint is the amount of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases that we put into our environment through our daily lives. Th this image uh, basically shows everything that we do to create uh, carbon emissions that are sent into our environment, which create climate change. It's impossible to uh, completely erase something we've already started, but our goal is to erase as much of our, as our carbon footprint as possible. There are a lot of little things we can do to help slow down climate change. For example, you could move your thermostat down 2 degrees in the winter and up 2 degrees in the summer. With this, um, half of the energy we use goes to heating and cooling, and with this little change, we could save up to 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide a year. Another thing is not let heat escape from your house over long periods of time. If you want to air at your house, just leave the windows open. The energy used to keep a house warm when it's cold causes up to two, uh, one ton of carbon dioxide emissions. Some other ways to slow down carbon dioxide emission, emissions are to um, not purify water as much because when we purify water, trees get cut down and gases are released. Also, if we saved all of our wasted water, 23 countries could, be, could get fed with water, and five minute showers are recommended because they use 25% less water than bats. If you only shower, then hundreds of gallons are saved of water. Hundreds of gallons of water are saved. Also, um, to reduce uh, fossil fuels being used, um, you could ride your bikes more and walk more um, because these don't release any gases into the air. To slow down CO2 emissions, you should also plant a tree. Planting trees can help much in reducing global warming than any other method. They not only give oxygen, but also take in carbon dioxide. Deforestation is a large contribution to climate change, and planting even a small tree in your yard helps. Another way to slow down CO2 emissions is to eat all the food you buy. 10% of the U.S. energy is used for growing, processing, packaging, and shipping food, and 40% of this food ends up in landfills. You should also consume less meat because meat is, is part of the most resource-intensive food to produce, so eating less of it will make a difference. A final way you can help uh, slow down climate change is buying better light bulbs. A LED light bulb uses 80% less fuel than other light bulbs and are cheaper overall. A 10 watt LED light bulb compared to our average 60 watt light bulb can save you $125 over the bulb's life. Less fuel means less uh, carbon dioxide released and if we can send less carbon emissions into our environment then we can help slow down climate change. Over the years, you may have seen media members and politicians debate the reality of climate change and challenge that there is no evidence for the change. However, over 25,000 peer-reviewed publications have been written on the issue of climate change. Out of, their, out of these 25,000 publications, only 0.1% of these publications deny the man-made impacts of global warming. To break that down, there would only be 25 out of 25,000 peer-reviewed scientific publications that denied a human impact on climate change, leaving 24,975 scientific publications that do acknowledge humans' role in climate change. Although many people still say that this topic is up for debate, 
The numbers suggest that the majority of scientists who study climate change feel that humans have played a major role in this rapid change of climate. All right, now we'll ask five trivia questions on everything that you've learned today. The first question is, who founded Climate Earth Day? Yeah, Gaylord Nelson, Senator. Good job. Question number two. Over how many people in over how many countries celebrate Earth Day? Um, a little bit higher than that. Um, a little bit higher than that. Two one. Yes. When was, uh, when was Earth Day first recognized in the United States? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good job. What is the carbon footprint? Can any of you name three different causes of climate change? Joey? Sort of, yeah. And there's also one more. There, like, has to do with digging. It's one of our largest in industries. just now okay so the first individual that I would like to discuss at this moment is new to the school well actually the second year so um, last year I met her in passing and I thought she was always adorable always smiling and she always had the same type of rude with her at all times Charlene okay no you were with her all the time um, but her fleet has dwindled, not to say the friendship has dwindled, but you can find one of the original chums, which is Charlene, with her at all times. I might be aging myself by the word chums, or I might have become English overnight. Okay, only adults will understand that, I think. Anyway, this year I have the fortune to see her in two classes, both smiling and sharing stories about her weekend, or her brother, to whom she says is very annoying. And as I delicately explained to her, it's their job to annoy. I can see she knows already. Most recently, I watched the play Shrek. It was blown away by one particular singer. We were all great, but this one really amazed me. Who guessed that Humpty Dumpty could belt out a tune? And again, saw her sing on the Musical.ly app. I'm not stalking you, I promise. <laughs> I'm not stalking you. Your name just suddenly appeared and I had to watch it, okay? I will not sing because we don't want to embarrass everyone, okay? And I thought you were wonderful. You are an incredible singer. You really are, okay? If you haven't guessed it already, I have chosen Dia. And I know Sorry, 
Yeah, it's I've, okay. I've chosen her for both justice and prudence, okay? I have chosen these because Dia exemplifies prudence as a thoughtful and considerate friend during class time, and I do notice her not to interrupt, but to help her fellow peers, and justice in treating others with compassion and respect. Thank you. She's a good singer. Is everyone here a sing? No. She's amazing. If you're on musically, check her out, okay? Sorry about that. Two more to go, quiet. Please. Okay. All right, this one, I can, this particular person, I can recall as far back as when he attended preschool with my daughter. Okay? But we don't need to go that far back. Um, I'm just going to let you know he has always been considerate, respectful to any adult, me included. Okay? He's always had the same soft tone, same respectful manner that he has always displayed that far back, and now I will bring him back to the beginning of Charter, where he has never ever wavered from being himself. More recently, I've had the pleasure, along with another colleague of mine, to be an advisor. I was so impressed by his choice, and am still impressed by his decisions when it comes down to his capstone project that he has us in a loss for words, all in a good manner. He is also able to show his passion with both history and science with such a vast knowledge beyond his age level. For this character, I have chosen Thomas Hogan for prudence. I'm sorry. He hasn't changed at all. I know his parents will say he has, but he really hasn't changed from, from preschool. Same sweet. Thomas shows sound judgment when making wise decisions and, as noted, has never wavered from the onset of being Thomas. I like to say Thomas owns Thomas. Okay? He is a person who is honest and true to himself. Okay. And I have one. I have one more to go, and then I know there's some more coming out. Okay? I like to always say I save the best for last. But what does it really mean to the last two? It, it pretty much means the same, okay? You're all great. Uh, it merely means the same, but right now you see my last character award is being handed out to someone, unless you know him, flies under the radar. Okay, he is very quiet, but when he shudders a word, he always seems to make me laugh when he spews out a comment, which is not hard to do. He always seems to justify everything and anything, but in a diplomatic way, and we all know how fond I am of politics. Most of you do not know that this person is also a great writer, but he doesn't like to share what he has written, which I can attest to being last year in ELA class with him. He's very secretive, and he's got great penmanship as well. Plus he can draw, but again, modest. You might know him when I am talking to you about that I confused he and his brother last year. And I'm, I'm still confusing he and his brother. I'm still convinced his parents mixed up their names, but that's another conspiracy theory that we can show it up later on. He likes to play jokes with Noah, which is not cool at all when it comes to Noah. Okay? I am getting to understand how he works further as one of his advisors in Capstone. And again, he's been doing a great job working on his own. I have chosen Max, the character. In so, in so doing, excuse me, I have chosen him for this because I always believe, and I still believe, that he acts in the correct manner, at the right time, the right place, and he shows respect to his peers, even if it involves him being funny, and displays good manners and patience to those around him. character award this morning. So, um, but I don't like to stand up here alone, so I always call my 
nominee up right away. So I'm going to call Khalil. Here we go. All right, thanks for joining me. Um, Khalil is being recognized today for demonstrating fortitude and prudence. Although Khalil joined BFCCPS this year, he, he exhibits his understanding for the school's virtues throughout each day. Khalil's positive attitude and warm smile brighten up a room. He is the type of person who will help out whenever he sees a need, often without being asked. Khalil has, known, has shown fortitude in the form of perseverance in many areas. In particular, Khalil has been working hard to understand some math concepts this year. Khalil is uh, motivated to learn, increasingly displaying a growth mindset. His belief that we can all grow and change, combined with his positive attitude, make Khalil a positive force in the classroom. It has been a joy to see Khalil grow this year. No one ever uses the podium. Okay, so I like to keep you in suspense. This person is one of, oh my gosh, she's just a gem. Um, she showed fortitude as she overcame a personal challenge um, from a previous experience. Not only was she starting at the FCCPS as a new student, but she started after September. At first, she was very, very quiet, and I was quite worried about her. Luckily, she had an excellent buddy. Um, she looks mad at me now, so, okay. <laughs> We're just gonna keep going. But, um, she had an open mind, even though she was so quiet, and she tried. She tried at making friends, practicing skills, learning our routines, and of course, academics. She is now one of the happiest sixth graders that I've ever worked with. Um, if you come upstairs in our classroom, especially towards the afternoon hours, you can probably hear her giggling. Her giggling and laughter is absolutely contagious. And she laughs at everyone's jokes. So if you ever want somebody to laugh at your jokes, she will laugh at them hysterically for probably at least 30 seconds at least. Um, I'm really grateful for her um, and she's so brave because I know that coming to a new school um, wasn't easy for her but I'm so glad you took the risk and you are absolutely one of the great joys of my day so thank you so much for being you Miss Haley. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Hola. Hola. I also have, whoa, I also have a character, I mean student, to, to uh, recognize this morning, so I'll go ahead and do that after I put my glasses on. All right, the student I am recognizing today is a fun-loving, energetic young man who enjoys playing practical jokes and making people laugh. Although these are great qualities, they can also be a little distracting in the learning environment. But this student is making progress in controlling his impulses and making better choices. As a result, he and those around him are able to stay focused on their work. I hope that being recognized today for improvements in the areas of prudence and temperance will inspire continued personal and academic growth in this fun-loving, wonderful individual. I am very pleased to present this character award to Mr. Jeremy Sanchez. <laughs> Thank you, parents, and 
friends and staff for making this a uh, great thank you to Mr. Murray's class. I find it so energizing to hear you guys talk about what you're learning, but to also hear your teachers talk about the great things that you're seeing, and to hear you guys get so excited for your friends when they get recognized. Nice job today. I hope you guys enjoy the sunshine. We finally have a little bit left. And have a great rest of the day. Eighth grade, you guys are being the first. If you got a character award, hang out for a picture.